full time and we go back to the beginning. And that is when I thought this will be uh, a component of the activities of being performed by the uh, uh, Center for Study of Mythology and Culture and so on. So I was very happy to accept the invitation. And I was looking forward to it because the invitation came two months ago and I was wondering why such a time gap between the invitation and the date of lecture and so on. I was trying to organize myself how best I can fit into this particular uh, scheme of activities in this area. And I also was wondering, uh, <coughs> well, more than 30 years ago, I initiated uh, prehistoric archaeological research in this area for two reasons, because for a very, very long time, uh, archaeology or prehistory of the entire West Coast was least understood. And there was no focused uh, investigation taking place in any sector of the West Coast, right from Kutch in the uh, northwest of this area to Kanyakumari in the south, because India's coastline is very, very long. But the Western Coast itself had been posing series of problems in terms of evidence for human occupation of this area. That was one reason. Another reason was uh, that this region of Goa is very much part of the Western Coast. And there were theories propounded by various archaeologists in the past who suggested that West Coast was an area of isolation. You know, why this isolation, concept of isolation? Because when in the context of human habitation of a given area, we classify these regions, you know, geographical environment in terms of attraction, areas of attraction, relative isolation and isolation and things like that. So one of our pioneers, and whom we regard as father of Indian prehistory, um, Robert Bruce Ford, he, had, uh, he was the first person to identify the presence for the earliest human settlements anywhere in the Indian subcontinent, <coughs> way back in 1863. And even though he found some um, artifacts or stone tools which were definitely made by man in the past, he was not very sure until he found more of them. And then in 1866, he came out with the first publication on his findings, and that heralded the beginning of scientific literature uh, in the in the uh, archaeologist's uh, effort to reconstruct uh, the cultural evolution of the Indian subcontinent, who were the first settlers, when they came, and uh, you know uh, what was uh, their uh, strategies to successfully adapt to various geographical environments across a huge subcontinent and so on. Uh, and then uh, he was of the opinion that West Coast was inhospitable for two reasons. One, environmentally, it is uh, densely forested. And uh, another component of environment was the availability of suitable rocks for making stone tools. So his knowledge of geology, and uh, his, he thought that basalts, which occupy a major part of the Western Deccan, uh, including some parts of Goa, uh, were uh, not suitable for making stone artifacts. And then uh, the landscapes were not favorable. Dense forest ecosystems were generally avoided by early human hunter-gatherers and so on and so forth. But this remained uh, untested for a very, very long time. And occasional reports of uh, evidence for early human occupation from different sectors of uh, the West Coast were coming now and then. But there was no convincing documentation about the you know, significant presence of humans along the west coast and so on. 